Hello students, today we are going to take up Deep Water from the book Flamingo, class 12. This has been written by William Douglas. In Deep Water, the author reveals about his fear of water and how he conquered it by determination and strong willpower. The author of Deep Water, William Douglas, was born in Maine, Minnesota, that is a state in the north central US on the Canadian border. After graduating with a Bachelor's of Arts in English and Economics, he spent two years teaching high school in Yakima. However, he got tired of this and decided to pursue a legal career. He also met Franklin D. Roosevelt at Yale and became an advisor and friend to the president. Douglas was a leading advocate of the individual rights. He retired in 1975 with a term lasting 36 years and he remains the longest serving justice in the history of the court. This story, Deep Water, is an excerpt that has been taken from Of Men and Mountains, okay? Of Men and Mountains is a book of personal adventure of discovery of William O. Douglas. It is an account of the way Douglas and other men found a richer life in the mountains and how they found something else besides, okay? It reveals how as a young boy, William Douglas nearly drowned himself in a swimming pool and in this essay he talks about his fear of water and thereafter how he finally overcame it. Well, there are not many characters in the story. However, you will uh, come across author's mother, author's father, author's coach or instructor as he is called in the story and a bruiser. So I shall be reading the chapter and I shall be explaining it simultaneously. Please pay attention. I hope you all have your textbooks or your PDFs with you. It had happened when I was, I here refers to the narrator that is, the, that is William Douglas himself. It had happened when I was 10 or 11 years old. I had decided to learn to swim. There was a pool at YMCA in Yakima that offered exactly this opportunity. The Yakima River was treacherous. You can see the meanings written over there on the slide and you can understand the meanings simultaneously, children. Treacherous means unpredictable dangers. YMCA is a welfare movement, all right, with branches all over the world that began in London in 1844, YMCA. The full form would be Young Men's Christian Association. Mother continually warned against it and kept fresh in my mind the details of each drowning in the river. But the YMCA pool was safe. It was only two or three feet deep at the shallow end and while it was nine feet deep at the other, the drop was gradual. I got a pair of water wings. You can see those water wings. Okay, or, or, uh, These uh, don't let you drown. Water wings and went to the pool. I hated, I hated to walk naked into it and show my skinny legs. Now, this year, you know the pattern of the paper has changed, children. So, in year 2021, 20, you will be getting a different uh, pattern uh, in which there is a lot of emphasis on the MCQs. So, it is mandatory for each student to read the chapters thoroughly and show my skinny legs when I, but I subdued, okay? Subdued means, subdued means, it, uh, but I overcome, you know, or bring under control. I subdued my pride and did it. From the beginning, however, I had an aversion. Aversion is strong dislike to the water when I was in it. This started when I was three or four years old. So you must understand that this fear of water was not something which developed over, a, which, which you know, uh, developed in later years of uh, author's life. This was something which was there right from his early childhood. So he narrates this incident. You should understand what happened when he was three or four. His father had taken him to the beach in California and they both were standing over there in the surf. Surf refers to the wave of the sea. I hung on to him. Hung on to him means he was holding his father. Okay, he was clinging on to him. Yet the waves knocked me down and swept over me. I was buried in water. My breath was gone. I was frightened. Father laughed. But there was terror in my heart at the overpowering force of the waves. So he was very, he was extremely frightened and the way uh, he just you know the the wave had swept over me he was buried in water his breath was gone 
this experience had never left him. My introduction to the YMCA swimming pool revived these unpleasant memories and stirred childish fear. So when he went to the YMCA, this is exactly what must have happened, children. All, he, all his early childhood memories just revived. But in a little while, I gathered confidence. I paddled with my new water wings, watching the other boys and trying to learn by aping them. Aping him, aping here would mean he was trying to copy them, imitate them. I did this two or three times in different days and was just beginning to feel at ease in the water when this misadventure happened. Now, I will just quickly simplify this misadventure for you in short before I go on to read this whole thing. So, he had gone to the pool children when no one was there. And after only a few, you know, some uh, day, days of swimming, uh, the place was quiet and the water still until a big bruiser of a boy came and tossed him into the deep end. He landed in a sitting position, swallowed water and went at once to the bottom of the pool. So as he was going down, he planned that he would make a big jump. But uh, just as his feet touched the bottom, coming to the surface, then he would lie flat and paddle to the edge of the pool. However, this, flat, this plan of his did not work as it was supposed to, as the initial jump of his wasn't as strong as he expected even though he had summoned all his strength. He reached the surface very slowly and struggled for air as he choked. His legs felt paralyzed as he went down another time. He tried to execute this plan again, but he froze underwater due to terror. He realized suddenly that he must remember to jump when he hits the bottom. This time again, the jump did not make any difference. Just as he reached the surface again, he went down a third time. This time he was so exhausted, children, that all his efforts ceased and he just felt relaxed. He went limp and was not scared anymore. He felt light as he was becoming unconscious. So I have just simplified the whole incident and now I'm just going to read it from the book. I had not been there long when in came a big bruiser or uh, the meaning of the uh, bruiser is also given. It means tough, aggressive person, okay? The, a big bruiser of a boy, probably 18 years old, he came there. He had thick hair on his chest and he was a beautiful physical specimen with legs and arms that showed rippling muscles. He yelled, hi skinny, how would you like to be dugged? Dugged here would refer to, you know, how would you like to be pushed underwater? And with that, he picked me up and tossed, tossed us, threw me. He threw me into the deep end. I landed in a sitting position, swallowed water and went at once to the bottom. And the rest of the uh, the whole episode, I have just simplified it. I'll just read it out for you. On the way down, I planned when my feet hit the bottom, I would make a big jump, come to the surface, lie flat on it and paddle to the edge of the pool. It seemed a long way down. Those nine feet were more like 90. And before I touched bottom, my lungs were ready to burst. But when my feet hit bottom, I summoned, I gathered all my courage and made what I thought was a great spring upwards. I imagined I would bob to the surface like a cock. Instead, I came up slowly. I opened my eyes and I saw nothing but water. Water that had a dirty yellow tinge, tinges that color, and I grew panicky. I flailed at the surface of the water, swallowed and choked. I tried to bring my legs up, but they hung as dead weights, paralyzed and rigid. A great force was pulling me under. I screamed, but only the water heard me. I had started on the long journey back to the bottom of the pool. Please understand, children, when you are underwater, whatever you may speak, you will never be heard. Okay? So he was also screaming, but no one was able to hear him. I struck at the water as I went down, expending. Expending is all his energy was spent. My lungs ached, my head throbbed, and I was getting dizzy. But I remembered the strategy. I would spring from the bottom of the pool and come like a cock to the surface. I would lie flat on the water, strike out with my arms, and thrash with my legs. Then I would get to the edge of the pool and be safe. So he was, this was his strategy. This was his plan of action. However, it did not work out. On the contrary, I went down, down endlessly. I opened my eyes, nothing but water with a yellow glow, dark water that one could not see through. And then sheer, stark, okay, severe, severe terror seized me. 
terror that knows no understanding terror that knows no control terror that no one can understand who has not experienced it i was shrieking shrieking is a high pitched piercing cry under water i was paralyzed under water i was stiff i was rigid with fear even the screams in my throat were frozen only my heart and the pounding in my head said that i was still alive and when in the midst of the terror came a touch of reason i must remember to jump so in between he he's all his thinking his cons, cons, consistently continuously thinking of you know escaping and thinking of how to come out of this difficult situation at last i felt the tiles under me my toes reached out as if to grab them i jumped with everything i had again he put all his strength and tried to jump but the jump made no difference the water was still around me i looked for ropes ladders water wings nothing but water a mass of yellow water held me stark terror took an even deeper hold on me like a great charge of electricity so terror seized him i shook and trembled with fright my arms wouldn't move my legs wouldn't move i tried to call for help to call for mother nothing happened and then strangely there was light i was coming out of the awful yellow water at least my eyes were my nose was almost out too then i started down a third time i sucked for air and got water the yellowish light was going out then all efforts ceased i relaxed even my legs felt limp okay limp means something which is not very firm f i r m firm and a blackness swept over my brain you know when everything is over and you now have realized that now no matter what i do it is not going to work out so the blackness swept over his brain it wiped out fear it wiped out terror there was no more panic it was quiet and peaceful nothing to be afraid of this is nice to be drowsy to go to sleep no need to jump too tired to jump it's nice to be carried gently to float along in space tender arms around me tender arms like mothers now i must go to sleep i crossed to oblivion and the curtain of life fell oblivion here refers to that unconsciousness okay so he it here refers to that state of non existence which is marked by death children it here life the, this metaphor has been used very beautifully life is compared to a stage performance the show comes to an end when the curtain falls when we cross from our mortal being to heavenly or ethereal being which is referred to as oblivion here the curtain of our existence falls so he is he feels that you know he is just leaving everything the next i remember i was lying on my stomach beside the pool vomiting so obviously we can see that he was finally rescued the chap that threw me in was saying but i was only fooling someone said the kid nearly died so douglas had a horrible experience he nearly died here be all right now let's carry him to the locker rooms they said several hours later i walked home i was weak and trembling i shook and cried when i lay on my bed i couldn't eat that night for days a haunting fear was in my heart you can underline this the slightest exertion upset me making me wobbly wobbly is unsteady movement from side to side in the knees so his knees would wobble and he would feel sick to the uh, and sick to the stomach i never went back to the pool i feared water i avoided it whenever i could but then after a few years when he came to know about the waters of the cascades these are some waterfalls i wanted to get into them and whenever i did when uh, whether i was wading okay wading is walking through the water uh the titan or the bumping or bumping river or bathing in warm lake of the goat rocks the terror that had uh, goat rocks children you should know that this is a extinct strato volcano in cascade range so just in case in mcqs you are asked about goat rocks you should know these are extinct strato volcano in cascade range all right the terror that had seized me in the pool would come back it would take possession of me completely my legs would become paralyzed i see horror would grab my heart so basically he wants to go there but whenever he did the terror that had completely seized him in the ymca pool would come back and take possession of him completely his legs would become paralyzed and an icy horror would grab his heart 
so this haunting fear of water followed him everywhere and this you know uh, ruined his fishing trips and it deprived him of the joy of boating and swimming this handicap stayed with me as the years rolled by in canoe on main lakes fishing for landlocked you can see there is a canoe in the picture <coughs> fishing for landlocked salmon bass fishing in new hampshire these are the some of the names of um, the kinds of fish trout fishing on the these are some of the names of the rivers okay dishute and metolius in oregon fishing for salmon on the columbia at bumping lake in the cascades wherever i went children wherever he went the haunting fear of the water followed him it ruined my fishing trips deprived me of the joy of canoeing boating and swimming i used every way i knew to overcome this fear but it held me firmly in its grip finally one october he decided to get an instructor and learn to swim now you see you have to once you decide that you have to overcome this fear you have to conquer your fear there is no looking back children he went to a pool and practiced 5 days a week and our each day the instructor put a belt around me a rope attached to the belt went through a pulley that ran on an overhead cable now these are some minute details because your paper will be in the form of mcqs um, so it is uh, it is better that you listen to the chapter again and again you read the chapter again and again and uh, you know concentrate on the minutest of the details the instructor put a belt around me so what did the instructor put around him a belt a rope was attached to the belt the rope was not attached to his arms or his legs or any other part of his body but to the belt itself went through a pulley that ran on an overhead cable he held on to the end of the rope and we went back and forth back and forth across the pool hour after hour day after day week after week so it was not something which was done just on a day or a month you know it was one day after day hour after hour and week after week so months of practice on each trip across the pool a bit of the panic seized me each time the instructor relaxed his hold on the rope and i went under some of the old terror returned and my legs froze so it is not easy to overcome any kind of fear but if you are strong willed and if you have a determination in your head there is and if you are strong headed and you decided that nothing can stop you you will be able to overcome your fears it was 3 months before the tension began to slack slack means reduce okay then he taught me to put my face under water and exhale and to raise my nose and inhale now those of you who know swimming would know that this is one of the basic things that one is told to do okay i repeated the exercise hundreds of times bit by bit i shed part of the panic that seized me when my head went under water next he held me at the side of the pool and had me kick with my legs for weeks i did just that at first my legs refused to work but they gradually relaxed and finally i could command them thus piece by piece he built a swimmer and when he had perfected each piece he put them together into an integrated whole in april he said now you can swim dive off and swim the length of the pool crawl stroke crawl stroke will be a kind of stroke children i did the instructor was finished now this is an important statement here the significance is that the instructor's role was over now my role had to start my fear is definitely not the instructor's problem instructor has done every bit that he could have done but overcoming conquering this fear is my problem but i was not finished so instructor was finished but douglas was not finished i still wondered if i would be terror stricken when i was alone in the pool i tried it i swam the length up and down tiny vestiges vestiges is you know remnants those little tiny remnants of the old terror would return but now i could frown and say to that terror you are trying to scare me huh well here is to you look and off i would go for another length of the pool this went on till july so you can imagine from april to july but i was still not satisfied i was not sure that all the terror had left so he went to lake wentworth in new hampshire please remember the places dived off a dock at triggs island remember the island's name and swam triggs island new hampshire wentworth okay so he went to which lake 
Lake Wentworth in New Hampshire, dived off a dock at Triggs Island, and swam two miles across the lake to Stamp Act Island. I swam the crawl, breaststroke, side stroke, and backstroke. These all are the different types of strokes in swimming. Only once did the terror return when I was in the middle of the lake. I put my face under and saw nothing but bottomless water. The old sensation returned to me nature. I laughed and said, well, Mr. Terror, what do you think you can do to me? Fled and I swam on. So, children, we can see that he had overcome his fear. Yet, I had residual doubts. At my first opportunity, I hurried west, went up to the Titan, Titan, T-I-E-T-O-N, this is again the name of a river, to Conrad Meadows, up the Conrad Creek Trail to Maid Glacier and camped in the high meadow by the side of Warm Lake. The next morning, I stripped, dived into the lake, swam across to the other shore and back, just as you know, this is this is the name of a person. This was a swimmer. Okay, Doug Corcoran. Okay, he was a swimmer who used to swim across from one shore to another and back. So, Douglas imitated this to overcome his residual fear of water. So, it, if it is asked in the MCQs, you should know the name. That is why it is written in uh, block letters in the slide. Okay, used to do. I shouted with joy and Gilbert Peak returned the echo. I had conquered my fear of water. The experience had a deep meaning for me as only those who have known stark terror and conquered it can appreciate. In death there is peace. There is terror only in the fear of death. As Roosevelt knew when he said all we have to fear is fear itself. This statement is very important. This question is asked many times in the paper, last year papers, if you will see. So this is an important statement in which you can uh, you can be asked, uh, narrate the incident, you know, as to how he overcame his fear. So in that you can write down. Because I had experienced both the sensation of dying and the terror that fear of it can produce, the will to live somehow grew in intensity. And at last I felt released free to walk the trails, trails are tracks, and climb the peaks and to brush aside fear. So this is the conclusion that William Douglas was finally able to conquer his fear and he shouted with joy. I hope you understood the chapter. Thank you so much.